Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight to learn about solar for apartments. I'm Mel Miller-Yule and I am a climate emergency officer at the city of Yera. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Wurundjeri, Woiwurrung and Bunurong peoples as the traditional owners and true sovereigns of the land we're joining from today. We also acknowledge the significant contributions made by other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to the life in Yera, Banyol, Darabin, Marybeck and Stonington. And we pay our respects to elders from all nations here today and to their elders past, present and future. So tonight's event is a community partner event of Sustainable House Day presented by Renew. And this event is hosted by the cities of Banyul, Darabin, Marybeck, Stonington, and Yera. We've come together as five councils to bring you this event because in all of our council areas, we have many residents who are living in apartments and who are interested in installing solar and improving the sustainability of their apartments and their buildings. All of our councils are supporting residents to get solar, either through Solar Savers or a Darabin Solar Saver. We're excited to have some great speakers with us tonight. We've got Solar Victoria, who will tell us about the new Solar for Apartments rebate. Alum Energy will share some information on solar sharing technology. Solar Savers will talk about how they can help residents in Banyul, Marybeck, Stonington, Yarra, and several other council areas to, to install solar on apartments. And a resident will share her experience of installing solar on her apartment and getting a Solar Victoria rebate through Darabin Solar Saver. After that, we'll have plenty of time for questions with the panel, and we'll have a couple of additional guests joining us for the panel, a technical representative of Specialized Solar and Electrical, who can answer additional questions about solar savers, and two representatives of Enviro Group, who can answer questions about Darabin Solar Saver. Before we hand over to our speakers, I'll briefly mention how we're using Zoom tonight. Our microphones are on mute, and cameras are off and this session is being recorded. So please post your questions in the Q&A section on Zoom and we'll read them out to be answered by our panelists during the Q&A. So feel free to put questions in the Q&A section throughout the presentations. We'll also use the chat to share links during the presentations. And at the end of the session, uh, you will also receive an email with links to further information as well as a brief survey to share your feedback on the event. And if there are lots of questions, we might answer some of them in writing in the Q&A and answer some live. This helps us to get more of your questions answered. So this is the first in a month of sustainability events designed for people living in apartments. This event is part of Sustainable House Day, but coming up we have the High Life Expo, which is a special event designed for people who live in or own apartment buildings and the people that help manage them. Um, the High Life Expo is a free event, but you do need to book a ticket. Um, you can use the QR code there or go to the link to um, register for the event. The expo includes a supplier showcase and a seminar series on Saturday, the 1st of June, and will cover topics like solar and renewable energy, EV charging, electrification, thermal comfort, decision-making in strata, energy efficiency, uh, better waste management, creating community and more. And as well as the High Life Expo main event on the 1st of June, there are three online High Life Expo events over the coming month. Um, there's Waste Not, which is how to reduce and optimize waste management and recycling in apartment buildings on Monday, the 20th of May. Naturally Cool, which is about planting for cooling on Wednesday, the 12th of, of June. And the third is called Getting to Yes, Navigating Good Decision-Making in Owners Corporations on Monday, the 17th of June. So here to kick off our first event for apartments over the next month, uh, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Guy Pritchard, Director of Incentive Programs at Solar Victoria. Thanks, Guy. Oh, you're just on mute. <laughs> that would help, wouldn't it? Thanks, Mel. And thanks very much for the opportunity to, to speak tonight. Um, we, we really appreciate that. I'll just bring my um, screen up and then we'll um, well, get underway. Is this it? <clears throat> Hopefully that's up now. Yes. yes All right. Great. So 
Thanks very much. Um, as I said, um, my, my name's Guy Pritchard. I'm Director of the Incentive Programs at Solar Victoria, and, and I too would like to pay my respect um, and acknowledge the traditional owners of land and pay my respect to their elders past and present. Um, yeah, we're really pleased to um, to have this opportunity to speak about um, the Solar for Apartments program, which is one of the one of the programs under that broader broader heading of um, the Solar Homes program. So maybe just a little bit about this, the Solar Homes program. It really was kicked off about four years ago, almost five years ago in in twenty eighteen, to support people to access clean, affordable, reliable energy. And the idea there really is, is by transitioning to solar, people can really take control of their electricity bills. Um, it also helps in that tackling climate change and building that the sort of the idea of that clean and reliable energy future. It, as I said, it was launched in 2018 and um, it's really was designed to assist Victoria keep on track to achieve that 40% renewable energy target for 2025. And solar homes that under that broad banner will um, contribute about 12.5% of that. Uh, the Solar for Apartments program was launched 13th of February um, this year. It is a joint initiative with the Commonwealth Government Solar Banks program. And it's um, it really is, as I said, designed to fit with the, under that broad banner of the solar, the, the broader solar homes program. Um, yeah, the, the, the program was is, is pitched like solar homes. It's really pitched at low and middle income um, families. And in this case, the low and middle income uh, cohort also includes a fair amount of renter apartments. So the, the program is, is targeting that cohort um, and to help with the upfront cost of um, renewable energy systems. It really should support householders to lower energy build through, bills through self-generated solar. And the other thing that we're, we're wanting to do with this one too is develop industry capacity and capability to meet the renewable energy needs of the whole community. And we know that the, um, the apartments area has been a very difficult one to, to get into. So the program has that specific design to, to try and tackle some of those barriers um, in putting solar onto, um, onto apartments. As I mentioned, it's jointly funded by the Commonwealth Government. So there's $16.1 million in total funding, 5,000 rebates um, available uh, of up to about 2,800 per apartment with a maximum of uh, 140,000 per apartment building. Now, round one of the program, as I said, launched in 30th, 13th of February. We are closing round one in the 30th of May. Um, part of the reason we want to close is to review how this first round has gone. And I'll, I'll show you a bit later some of the numbers. It's, it's going very well. Uh, but we want to review it and see if we can actually target it um, even more precisely and to have a look at what's come up during round one so that we can try and smooth things out for round two. So round two would be looking at opening up in early in the new financial year, so around that sort of August time. But, yeah, it closes at the moment on the um, on the 30th of May for round one applications. Uh, eligibility there will be it's um, open to owners' corporations that need to be Victorian tier three or four owners' corporations and, and obviously having not previously received a grant under the program. It, the application can be submitted by an OC committee or an individual resident on behalf of the um, OC or the strata management company on the OC's authorised behalf. Um, to, be, to apply for that sort of final uh, approval and eligible eligibility, the OC will be required to make a declaration that the solar system settings are equitably sharing it amongst those participating residents. So um, the, the if you are an individual re resident uh, making it on behalf of your OC, you need to have the uh, right authorizations from the OC to, to come on, uh, to actually submit the application. Um, YT Tier 3 and 4, well, under the Owners um, Corporations Act, Tier 3 and uh, Tier 3 OCs have between 3 and 9 lots. Tier 4 OCs have between uh, 10 and 15 lots. So grouped together, they meet the overall program rule of um, between 5 and 50 lots. So we're restricting it to those buildings um, between 5 and 50 lots for this first round. We may look a bit later on about opening it up to others, but um, for this first round especially, we're going to look at between five and 50. Um, the other, the, a few other um, eligibility requirements on the properties, being no more than eight storeys tall. One of the things that we want to make sure is 
that if you're putting solar on the roof, that then there is actually going to generate enough space to generate capacity for that building. The, our initial research has said that uh, eight storeys tall in the typical building um, will have that. Um, we're also we're open to a review of that in the future as well. If there's some evidence that shows that you can go higher and still generate a sufficient quantity of energy from that. Uh, they must be completed buildings, so it's not open to new builds at the moment. Uh, be a Victorian Class Two domestic building under the NCC, so it's got a, an apartment building with a common property. It um, needs to have a median capital improved apartment value of not exceeding nine hundred and fifty thousand. We we will check that um, for people, um, but it will need to be. Um, a median value of that. So some may be higher than 950, some may be lower, but it's a median value. And that's how we're, we're targeting it to sort of low and middle income earners rather than, um, than those above. The solar homes income test is um, for people with incomes less than 210,000. We're not going to do that income test because it's an OC this time, but so we're using the 950,000 median value as a proxy for that. Uh, the other things they have to be have not had solar installed in the last 10 years and obviously needs to be located in the state of Victoria. Um, there are other programs in other states. Um, yeah, but uh, we're not funding those. Uh, the eligible solar systems itself, the technology, um, they could include direct connect systems where the um, where multiple individual PV systems are connected to individual lots or they could be a solar sharing system. And I think um, Lee will talk a bit more about some of that technology there, where a single solar PV system equitably shares that power across all of those areas. Uh, the, these um, systems have to equitably share it, as I said, across all of those. We are also allowing for some common areas to, to come in there, but the amount of um, power that goes to a common area shouldn't be exceeding what goes to an individual lot. And one of the things there we, that we won't do is um, just provide um, a rebate for common areas. Now, with all of these, again, um, you might have to talk to your councils and you, you're in the right forum for that um, because approvals may be required by your local council for some of these. Um, just a, a little bit more about um, the requirements. Uh, it needs to... Um, supply power behind the meter to a minimum of five and no more than 50 residential lots. Uh, what we're asking for is the retailers will give you a, a demonstrated payback period and installation costs within 10 years. That's really to look at how we can get some consumer um, protections in there so that you know that you're getting um, the savings will, will give you a, 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 the savings generated from the system will give you a reasonable payback period and it won't be, um, won't be onerous to actually have to pay the system off without getting a reasonable return on your energy bills. It needs to equitably share the benefits with participating residents. So it's not all going into one area, one, one common area or, or one uh, lot, but it'll need to be equitably shared. You, uh, I mentioned about the, um, the common areas, supplying power to residential lots behind the meter. So one of the ideas there is to make sure that we're reducing the, from a government perspective, reducing the ask on the grid, and this will help us do that. Uh, it needs to be, well, sorry, it needs to be, oh, I've lost my space now, installed on a common property roof, uh, and we are asking that they, the eligible products are on our approved list and the retailers are on our, and installers are on our approved retailers and installer lists. Um, as I mentioned, solar sharing technologies can be used. Um, across uh, across this program and it's not mandatory for all apartments within a building to participate but I know that there are um, rules within the OCs about um, getting 75 percent agreement of people to have the system installed so there's those sorts of things that we'll need to work through um, a few things that we require under the solar home program the minimum five-year warranties for the um, the technologies used um, benefit sharing with common areas that payback period. And the funds uh, that we will pay will be uh, up to 100% of the system purchase and installation costs, but to a maximum of 2,800 per participating apartment. Mm -hmm. So if the cost is lower than um, 2,800 per participating apartment, 
um, you could receive up to 100%. We have quite a few applications in already. None of them have hit that 100% level. Um, we're looking at about 50 to 60, 65% um, would be covered by the rebate for most of the applications we've received now. But I'm happy to answer questions on that one later as well. Um, the application process, we, we, we've talked a lot with, um, with OCs, with strata managers and councils and solar industry stakeholders about how to make the application process easy to get into um, because we realise that then there are, after that, there are actually quite a lot of barriers. So what we wanted to do is make it easy to apply. So there will be a two-step process and um, the initial application, it, it essentially assesses the eligibility of the OC and the property with an initial quote being that sort of step one. It's relatively simple application, can be quickly assessed by us to give a letter of conditional pre-approval. And after that pre-approval, the OC will then need to work through the final project design with their retailer, installer, and, and with the OC approvals with any special solution, uh, special resolution or ballot you need to do. The letter of pre-approval is um, valid for 90 days. We, we, we are going to try and stick to that 90 days, um, but we will take, um, we will be open to some extensions if you're getting close to having a special resolution and those, um, or there's some other delay that, that's explainable. So what we really want people to do is, is have a lot of it lined up before they do the initial application, come in, get there, um, like you know you're going to be valid and we'll receive a rebate and then move through into the more detailed um, detail design, detail quote, and special resolution after that. So that two-step process is, as I said, is made to try and um, give people a confidence that they're eligible and not going to do a lot of work before they have to, um, to make a commitment. A final application will, will need to be submitted with a quote and detailing the final participating lots. And then we work through a funding agreement um, with the, all of the terms and conditions of the program and the timelines and the funding amounts and the project will move into that sort of installation phase. And we, we will work, the, the OC will need to pay up front, but we will work through part payment, um, if that's possible, in two um, payment steps, milestone one and milestone two, um, where there's uh, something like an evidence of an order being based, we will pay on that, and then we'll pay the final payment upon evidence of the system installation. Um, and th that's, sort of a broad overview, if you like, of how the application process will work. Uh, I, I know we'll come to questions later, but I'll just point out a few other quick things. There's there's a lot of support and resources on our website and as, as well as um, through council as well. There's uh, a lot of support and resources through there with a guide to apart guide to solar for apartments. Um, so check for our, our um, on our website and on the council websites if you do want to have more of a, a detailed look at, at, um, at how you get involved in this. Uh, and I thought just maybe um, share a little bit about um, the response so far. As I said, we opened on February 13. We've had, actually, I looked today, we've had over 220 applications now, um, looking at over three, well over 3,000 apartment lots. Um, most of those um, are buildings between three and four storeys uh, high um, and 54% are owner-occupied and about 46% uh, are rented. Very much clustered around um, the, the inner city ring, as you can see there. The 42% are from Port Phillip, Yarra and Marybeck. 85% um, are using a solar sharing technology, which um, is a very still a very... Um, very new thing for apartments. Uh, the technology itself has been around for quite some years, but um, it's really, um, I think that people are coming a lot more comfortable with it and it's um, becoming much more well-established there. The average system size is is 29 kilowatts. So they're, they're reasonable size, but um, that also reflects, I think the fact that there are three, three stories and the average number of um, uh, apartment lots is between 12 and 15 although we have had some applications with up to the full 50. So um, as I mentioned, yeah, uh, just to reiterate, May 30 is, is the end of round one, but um, we expect people will start getting ready for round two, which we, we plan to open um, in, the, in the new financial year. Um, I'll just leave, when, when are we doing um, questions, Mel, at the end of the presentations here? Yeah, that's right. So we'll go after the end of all of the speakers. 
if you'd like, would you like to talk through these briefly or do you want to leave no, it to the end? Okay. Um, okay. I'll just let, left it there as a placemarker. I wasn't quite sure yeah. whether we're going to do that, but um, there are frequently um, answered questions on our website as well for people. Yep. So I'll stop right. sharing and I'll hand back to you, Mel. Thanks so much, Guy. That was really informative. And I hope that gave everyone a really good overview of the new Solar for Apartments rebate and how you can apply. And if you have questions, please pop them into the Q&A and we'll ask them out during the question time. And so now I'd like to introduce Will Anstey, who's the Housing Partnerships Manager at Alum Energy. Will is going to talk to us about solar sharing technology. Thanks, Will. Thank you, Mel. Um, and good to see everyone um, attending. A uh, really good turnout. Uh, for those that don't know me, um, I'm a housing, housing partnerships manager here at Alum. Um, and I guess to introduce Alum Energy, um, and I'll flick up my slides very briefly. Um, to introduce Alum, um, Alum is a company, um, is a Melbourne, I guess, uh, born and bred sort of company. Uh, been around since uh, 2015. Uh, came out of the University of Melbourne back in the day as a small startup um, and have grown, I guess, strength to strength and are now, a, I guess, an international company um, based here in Richmond in the city of Yarra, um, which is quite uh, circumstantial. Um, and we manufacture here in Melbourne, um, which is our sole share product. Um, and we export internationally, um, mainly to the US and UK and across Europe. But uh, Australia is still our largest market um, and Victoria should be our largest state uh, coming through. Um, so um, with that, um, let's just make sure my screen's sharing properly. Um, here's a little bit of an insight into our team as well. Uh, very small part of the team. Um, this is the Australian-based team. Um, I guess the big thing to, to note is we're all sort of lovers of clean energy um, and really um, here to make a difference in the world and really bring, I guess, solar to all of those in the, um, I guess, in the residential market who had traditionally couldn't access the benefits of solar. Uh, so really excited to hopefully work with a lot of um, people that are listening here today. So first question I usually get asked is uh, why shared solar? So um, there's a lot of, I guess, reasons to go about this. Uh, very similar reasons to that of a standalone home uh, resident. Um, and it, in a nutshell, I guess, as a precursor, you know, the purpose of what we do here at Alum with SolShare is to sort of produce, produce or bring the traditional approach to solar that is on a standalone home and bring that to apartments, but do it do it in a much more efficient way. So <clears throat> by having an apartment building, one of the key things is um, able to utilise um, that roof space uh, for a bit of money uh, making in a way or saving um, of electricity bills. So with such a large, I guess, you know, roof space for a lot of these buildings, um, it is really important that, you know, that is an opportunity. Um, probably a lot of people's perceptions are skewed by, you know, the really big, tall apartment buildings in the centre of Melbourne. Um, but in reality, the vast majority of, um, I guess, strata buildings or owners' corporations um, in Victoria are a lot of those 6 to 30 apartment size buildings. Um, so there is a very large market for opportunities such as this. And, you know, based on what Guy has also mentioned earlier, um, that's been shown through the applications that have been coming through for the, the funding. Other key thing is future-proofing your building as well. So a big part of this is, you know, uh, bringing up a lot of the um, electrical aspects to spec, uh, to standard, because um, irrespective of whether you're utilising solar or not, um, whether you want EVs, heat pumps, et cetera, um, what else is there? You know, even reverse cycle air conditioning, induction cooktops, um, all of those things need to be up to spec to take that on. Um, so this has been a really, really good facilitator, especially with this funding, to do that. Now, we'll cover this a little bit in further detail later on, uh, but even increasing the value of your property. So although most of what we do is the retrofit market, we do work with some new builds as well. Um, and we've seen some really good um, tracked actual sales margins um, where there's been a really big increase where solar has been attached to an apartment complex. Um, very similar to standalone home solar. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, by having an alternate source of energy, you're not relying on those big energy retailers as much. Um, noting that you still can choose whoever the retailer is, but it does put the power in your hands um, when it comes to being able to save a little bit more money and protecting yourself from the uh, you know cost of living increases. Now, with that, I uh, would love to introduce SoulShare. So this is a little uh, item here of a SoulShare on a, on a wall. Um, but to give an idea, um, just, I guess, um, um, 
relevance to how Soul Share sits in the market. And we do have over two and a half thousand apartments, individual apartments connected to Soul Share in Australia. Um, and there's some examples of installs, um, mostly retrofits, uh, a couple of new builds. Um, about half of these sites are in Victoria, um, but it gives a, the bottom middle one is in Sydney, um, as we don't have a bay. <laughs> Uh, but it gives some examples of the different types of uh, buildings um, that are, end up being suitable uh, for solar. Now, how does SolShare actually work? So um, SolShare is modular in itself. Um, so depending on the amount of apartments, um, you may need multiple SolShares. But for the purpose of this sort of discussion, I'll just speak through uh, an example apartment building that we've got here on our left. So you've got that shared rooftop solar on the rooftop. Um, it's very common that, you know, 15 apartments might have around 20 to 25 kilowatts of solar. Um, it's very unexpected how little solar makes a really big impact when it's shared, when it comes to soul share. Um, so it's a really big piece of, I guess, the value add for this. But as we can see on the, on the diagram here, we've got the solar panels on the rooftop. Um, that goes down to an inverter. Now, the inverter, of course, is required to convert any of that DC energy or that solar power generated by those panels into AC power that can then be shared or utilized in the building. Then the soul share um, can then uh, basically, although there's one arrow coming out of it, there's actually a physical wire or connection that goes behind each meter um, within that apartment building. So what that means is the soul share is in charge of, I guess, splitting that large flow of solar into multiple directions uh, for each apartment. And we do that ensuring that everyone can actually receive those electrons that they've generated. Um, and that's done in a fair and equitable way. Um, now that integration happens uh, at the electricity meter board. So the common meter board, um, wherever that may be. So wherever your electricity meters are co-located, generally per floor or per building, um, it is really, I guess, non-invasive when it comes to installation. There's no cabling that needs to happen to your individual apartment it's only that common electricity meter board, um, which is a common misconception. So I guess from a you know an impact perspective, it is really quite simple to implement. Now, the biggest thing would be, oh, I guess a, you know, a great part of soul share if, is if it just fed energy equally, that would be great. But the next step or the underlying software that sits behind soul share actually allows it to do it in a smart way. So we're constantly five times a second measuring the energy demand or energy load of each apartment and constantly figuring out where to send that solar at that point in time. So a uh, very common, you know, concept that we look at is if, you know, if I myself, I'm in unit one of this building and I'm working from home today, whereas my neighbor in unit two is working from the office. Um, I, of course, am um, home, have the potential to use some of that solar, whereas my neighbor doesn't. So at those points in time, I can actually access a lot more solar um, than traditionally would be allocated to me because I'm sharing in that much larger overall system. Now, day to day, it'll vary how much solar everyone gets, but what SolShare ensures is per calendar month, everyone receives the total volume of solar um, associated with their ownership. So the ownership usually uh, is either equal per apartment or as per strata lot entitlement. So it just means that everyone gets their full volume of solar as to how they use their own solar is up to their sort of own energy behavior. So you might self-consume you know, a large portion of it, you may still feed a little bit and sell it back to your electricity retailer. Um, everyone has that ability and it is up to you to self-utilize that energy. Um, and you do also have full monitoring of all of that data as well, and as well as your energy usage data. So it's quite a uh, really cool tool that you can use to maximize your savings, but also ensure that you're not um, you know, increasing your energy usage just because you have solar, uh, which is quite common. Um, it also means you can track how much you're actually saving as well. Um, other key part of that is um, what the systems are designed for, you know, they're 25, 30 year systems. So what that means is those systems are designed for the building. So that's why we usually match strata lot entitlement or OC lot entitlement as um, well as possible. So it ensures that everyone gets that similar percentage savings on their bills uh, for the long term. And then that's that, I guess, uh, you know, it's a feature of that property that can be um, added for the long term as well. And when you sell your property, you have that benefit. Now, this is just a little example of how the sharing works. Um, we'll be able to share some of these slides as well um, and also feel free to reach out for a bit more information. But this example goes an individual system comparison. Um, in this scenario, we have a 1.7 kilowatt individual system 
compared against a 1.7 kilowatt allocation with SoulShare. Now, note with SoulShare, you're not limited to 1.7 kilowatts. You can instantaneously access up to six kilowatts in most scenarios. So it does mean you're not feeding um, energy back to the network or back to the grid to your retailer all day, every day for uh, peanuts or seven cents or five cents, depending on what your plan is. Um, when other times of the day, you might be paying 30 cents for energy. So the real, I guess, tool of SoulShare is making sure you self-consume as much of that solar on site um, and you don't sell as much back to the network because as we can see from the numbers here, you've got to sell four units of energy at seven cents to offset the purchase of one unit of salt of energy from your network. So it's just about better utilizing the energy. And because you are pulling from a much larger system, even in those evening periods, you can you know cover a lot more of your peak loads when the sun's uh, not shining. Now, from there, we have a little pool photo. This is just to sort of mention, you know, uh, getting shared solar is very similar to a pool um, in a, an apartment complex. Everyone gets that benefit. Everyone gets to share in it. Not everyone uses it at the same time. And that's where that variability really helps in maximizing those savings. Um, there are some really good um, situations for those investor owners as well. So apart from the value increase with your property, um, with the common area being connected as well, you still get the benefits there. And then the residents will get benefits. Um, whoever's living there, own, occupy, or renter, because they have that electricity account and they can choose whoever their retailer is. Um, and there are a lot of mechanisms to allow um, that to work as well. Um, we do have some data as well around this, um, just around the, um, I guess, the increase in property value. And there's quite a few data points that we've got here. We're more than happy to elaborate on that, um, you know, where you approach us directly as well. Um, but probably just to lead into the Q&A as well uh, to give people some ideas on what they're curious about. But we get a lot of questions on roof types, roof access, um, convincing owners that are uninterested and how the sharing works. So more than happy to sort of elaborate on this. Um, and we've got a really capable panel um, here as well who will be able to answer a lot of these questions. Um, and obviously Guy's gone through the funding. Um, we are very privileged to be a part of this program as well. Um, have a technology that's suitable. Um, so we really employ anyone that's sort of interested in it. Um, even if you don't proceed, yeah, definitely explore on what your building suitability is um, when it comes down to it. So with that, I'll hand back to you, Mel. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks very much, Will. I'm sure we'll have some great questions coming through for you. Um, we've got a few coming through already, which we'll save for Q&A time, and I'm sure we've got some more that will come through um, because I think there's a lot of interest in the Soul Share technology. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Anna Imberger, the program leader of Solar Savers, who will be joined by Scott de Gabriel, who's, who is um, the apartment specialist at Specialized Solar and Electrical, who are the supply, the solar supplier through Solar Savers. Thanks, Anna and Scott. Great. Um, thanks, Mel. I'll just set up my screen here. Apologies. Oops. Sorry for this. <laughs> okay. Apologies, I'm having my computer. Okay, so um, thanks so much for that, Will and Guy. So I suppose we're leading to really what Solar Saves is about, and we sort of fit into these um, both the solar for apartments and also um, a loom. So we're actually a um, a local government initiative, and we've been um, working with seventeen councils um, in Metro. In metro and regional, so that includes the Yarra, Stonington, Daniel, and Marybeck. Um, and we actually assist households and residents to install solar PV and solar batteries. But we're also moving into um, to offer heat pumps and hot um, heat pump, hot water systems, and high efficiency split systems in the new financial year. Um, so we provide a shared services model basically for councils to um, achieve efficiencies as part of this, and we essentially act as a in between body between our participating councils, um, you and the residents, our, our trusted install, which is specialised solar and electrical, um, who are with us tonight, Scott, but also, um, and so our role is really making the process of installing solar as streamlined um, and easy as possible. So that's what our, our role is here. So we sort of link link you, the resident, your apartment, um, uh, your apartments um, um, to um, a qualified installers. 
So why would you install in Soul Savers? So we are, as I said, we're, we are a council supported program and we have in, independently evaluated um, our installers um, through a public tender. So in May um, last year, we went through a public tender and we selected our installers based on um, you know, their quality of products, their fair pricing, um, safety, installation, and their customer service. And then that's where um, we selected specialised solar and electrical, and they're based in Limbrook, and they are our program installers. So they're accredited with, with the Solar Homes Program. Um, they've also got a... Um, They've got a relationship already with um, with the Loom, and they've had experience with using that Soul Share technology. So they're very well placed to support um, your your apartments and to install solar. Um, so also going through our program as well, we have some additional sort of compliance or, or um, assurance for you. So we actually um, engage independent auditors to complete compliance audits of five percent of all our installations, just to ensure that everything is um, installed um, to current standards and regulations. And this is in addition to the standard certificate uh, safety um, inspection that you receive at the end of the installation. We also do um, OHS audits as well, just to ensure that your your installers are safely installing the system at your property as well. So we want to make sure that they're working around you in, in a safe um, in a safe manner. Um, but the main thing too is we're, we're a reliable contact for you. So we work with specialized solar. And electrical on a daily basis. Um, we track your progress just to see how when you receive the quote, um, we look at your quotes, we make sure that you have your pre-inspection and installation in a timely manner. And we're also um, always available to ask any questions um, along the way if you have any questions about um, the rebates or just your quotes. Um, but Specialized Solar also um, have had quite a lot of experience in assisting people through um, the solar for apartments rebate at the moment. Um, so they're quite well versed in um, what's happening and their criteria there. Um, so that's basically how our program sort of fits into into um, this night tonight, this workshop. So I'll pass rather over to um, Scott from Specialized. So he'll talk more about the products that we have on offer through our program and how we can help you. So um, Scott, just let me know. I'll pass on to the next slide for you. Nice. Thank you, Anna. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott DeGabriel, and I'm sort of head of commercial and loom project at Specialized Solar and Electrical. Uh, and yeah, looking forward to taking the time to learn a little bit more about solar for apartments with everyone and how it could benefit you and, and your home. Next slide, please. So who are we? Probably a good place to start. Uh, look, originally established in the mid-80s as part of the Specialized Heating and Cooling Group, uh, Specialized Solar and Electrical is a family-owned business based in Melbourne with six offices in Victoria and New South Wales. Since the turn of the century, we have helped thousands of households uh, and businesses to save money on electricity and become more energy efficient while reducing their carbon footprint. We're proud to be their trusted partner as they seamlessly transition into an all electric future. We do classify ourselves as electrification experts. The reason is as a company, we do everything that assists you to transition from gas to electric. So on top of solar PV for apartments, we can uh, we can do solar PV for residential properties, commercial properties, uh, hot water heat pumps, heating and cooling, induction cooktops, battery storage, electric vehicle chargers, electric vehicle stations, lighting, switchboard upgrades, meter panel upgrades, weather sealing, basically anything electrical. We recognize that transitioning to an all electric building, uh, especially in the apartment complexes, is a significant undertaking that can be both time consuming and costly. As your long-term partners, we commit to supporting you from the initial planning stages to full implementation and beyond. Next slide, please, Anna. Thank you. Uh, this is a great page. I love looking at it. Uh, it's actually from the website Rewiring Australia. If you haven't been on there, please jump on there. Uh, it's a great source of information uh, and it, uh, you can end up hours in a deep rabbit hole. Uh, basically what it says is that fossil fuel prices aren't steady. Uh, they're increasing and have been for the past 30 odd years and will continue to grow. Today, the cost, as you can see, the average Australian around 5,000, 6,000 per year. And in 2050, it's predicted to be close to 9,000 per year, which is really isn't sustainable for any family home. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so issues that we are facing today. First one, the price stocks. Uh, so also from re rewiring Australia, the last 10 years, electricity prices have increased 14% per year on average. And the last few years, it's, it's been a lot more than that. Uh, 
um, the costs continue to go up, the prices have gone up, uh, and we, we need to find out how to improve that situation when it comes to reducing their bills, the right products to install, the right company to install, what works, and how do I achieve this electrification process? That's where we can potentially help. High emissions. No secret, uh, we're in a climate emergency, okay? Uh, and the world is warming at a rapid rate and it needs to change yesterday. So we need to all get on the front foot with that. Uh, high energy bills. Um, look, month on month, the cost of gas and electricity keeps hurting families. Uh, livability, uh, bottom line, the ability to just you know go to the shopping centre, uh, whatever it may be. So we, we need to help in that area too. Uh, and then the overall lack of control with all these different issues. What do we do? How do we get better? How do we improve our current situation? Every day, uh, I hear people say the same thing. Next slide, please. Okay, so what's the solution? Electrification, a smart, connected solar energy management system. And we're actually really excited to now have both a solar solution for apartments with the solar share technology, as well as the financial assistance from the solar Victorian rebates. There's never been a better time to utilize these options. Next slide, please. Beautiful. Now the products that, we've, uh, that are available for apartments through the Solar Savers Program, uh, for solar for apartments, is a SunGrow inverter and REC panels. Okay, and they've been chosen specifically for this type of setup. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, basically because they have a great mix of quality, durability and performance. Just to start on the SunGrow inverter first. SunGrow inverters, the main reason why we only choose this option to install on, uh, on apartment buildings is because it's passively cooled, which means they're designed <coughs> without fans or moving parts. Basically, whenever you have a fan-based cooling system and it's a moving part that's operating 24 seven, eventually you're gonna have a breakdown issue with it. Uh, it's just simple wear and tear. Um, so you can't have that sort of setup. It's also a lot more quiet, uh, which is a lot more ideal for the residents. Uh, it's also a hybrid inverter, meaning we, we can connect a DC battery in the future, if you wish, and it works much in conjunction with SolShare, much better than your standard AC setup, okay? Uh, it has an extended warranty, as you can sort of see up there, of 15 years, which highlights the durability of the unit and the confidence from the manufacturer to back it for that long. And, it's, uh, and as a company, they've invested more money into research and development than any other solar company in the world. And as a result, they've continued to develop year on year for the last 20 odd years. Now the panels. REC. Sorry, uh, REC. So the higher you go in apartment buildings, obviously the windier it is. This panel is the only panel in the world that actually has two stabilizing bars built behind the panel. So you stand a frame and the two bars that sit behind it, which keeps the frame really strong and sturdy. So on those high wind days, when the, the cells are potentially cracking or moving in, in inferior built panels, this panel is steady. So it's, as over a long term, you're not going to get the degradation and the lack of output as a result. So you really need to have a well-built panel this, uh, for the type of install, and that's what it is. Uh, and to back that up, it actually has the lowest claim rate out of any solar panel manufacturer in the world. So out of every 1 million panels that are manufactured, it's only 72 panels that have a claim on it. And I think that's at 0.007%. Um, it's pretty remarkable when you consider the company has been around for what, over 28 years and the panels have been installed uh, 28 years ago, and you can go on their website and check this, they're still performing at over 90% day one efficiency. And technology has come a long way since then. So basically you do have more chance of being struck by lightning than one of these panels breaking down. Uh, just to summarize about this panel, the Alpha Pure R panel has heterojunction technology, which basically means it can produce more power than any other panel in the world. It can start earlier, finish later, produce in all light conditions, and it'll provide each resident and apartment owner with more uh, solar, sorry, more electricity for their apartment and, and more savings long term. And just to summarize for both of these products, because uh, it's really important when, when looking at this type of solution. So both products are backed by strong local support and presence in Australia, meaning that help is always just around the corner if you do need it. Um, you can enjoy peace of mind with industry leading warranties for all products and installation. So as I mentioned, the inverter is 15 years parts labor. Uh, the panels are 25 years. And just on the inverter, not bad considering the industry standards, five years. Uh, workmanship warranty, which is the installation, uh, and probably our most impressive warranty considering. Uh, the industry standard is now five years. Uh, we do 15 years. Okay, so no one's ever come close to that in the industry. When you have the high-end quality installs that we do, and you're dealing with high-end quality products, 
we should be able to guarantee that working ship, which is what we do. Uh, there's also the whole system warranty, which is the NETCC program. That was brought in by Solar Victoria. You know, we've matched that to become part of the program, but it wasn't too hard considering all the other warranties were, were triple that uh, across the board. And then uh, finally, we have a, uh, a guarantee of energy output for the first 12 months. No other company in the industry will actually guarantee that output. Now, should you extend, uh, should you want to extend this for the next sort of 50 odd years, uh, you can do that as long as you complete a yearly service and clean through our company to make sure that the system can perform to the level that we know it will. Next slide, please. Beautiful. Cool. Thank you. Um, okay. So how to sort of register for the, uh, through the website tonight. So if you go on the Solar Savers website, you go on the top right-hand corner where it says get a quote. Uh, and then you go down to homeowners there uh, and click on that uh, little icon there. On there, it will take you into the next slide. Uh, and then you would select the council that you live in. Uh, so whatever it is, Banyol City Council, uh, City of Sonnington, uh, Marybeck, and uh, City of Yarra. Okay, so you can click whichever one and then it'll take you through the process to be able to register. Once you click the appropriate council, uh, then it'll take you through a variety of questions and ask you to potentially add some photos to your initial application to allow us to better assess the site uh, before we even chat to you. From there, once you complete that registration uh, the, uh, through the Solar Savers website, uh, it will come to us. Um, and from there, we'll book you in for a discovery consultation uh, with one of the specialized solar electrical um, experts in the field. Uh, once during that process, we'll understand a bit more about your site and understand one, if we could potentially help to what the site requires and what you guys are looking to achieve. If we feel like we can do that, we'll then book in a time to, uh, for one of us to complete a uh, site visit and do a walkthrough where we get a better understanding of the uh, potential um, issues that might arise at the site and also what was needed for the site. Uh, once we've done that, we'll then provide you with a no obligation uh, addictive quote. Um, and this can be used for the Solar Victoria rebate application. I've had, uh, probably close to a dozen now that have done this uh, and it's been a really easy process for them and we can assist you through that process if you have any questions. Um, and then from there, once it's all approved, uh, we then say we will need to organise for a head electrician um, and an, a structural engineering report. Now, no corners can be cut when we're discussing uh, solar for apartment buildings. Uh, you need to consider some uh, significant safety aspects and making sure the roof is protected is, is paramount. So if you're not getting a structural engineering report, uh, you're cutting a lot of corners. So that's why for us, it's a must. Uh, part of that process for, for a site inspection for head electrician and structural engineering report, will give you those costings uh, if we get to that stage. And then finally, once we've uh, done that and completed that process um, and finalized the quote for you, we'll then happy to attend the AGM or, and the OC meeting to present and answer any questions. So that way everyone's well and truly across uh, what that might look like. Beautiful. Uh, next question. Oh, sorry, next slide. Okay, beautiful. Now, basically from here, uh, it's the benefits. So with the solution offered through the Solar Savers Program, here are your benefits. You're finally going to get protection against price fluctuations. So for too long, people in apartments haven't been at, given that opportunity to protect themselves from the 14% increase year on year. Now it's finally your chance. Transparency into your energy usage. So through that, uh, through this solution, we will provide uh, monitoring. So you'll be able to see how much solar is being produced, how much utilising in your own home, and how much your how much is being exported back to the grid. Therefore, allowing you to adjust and change your habits to utilise as much of your solar power uh, as possible through that daytime period to to lower your bills ongoing. It'll obviously also reduce your carbon footprint and help protect uh, the environment. Okay, so being able to finally make a significant change to the climate, uh, this climate emergency will be something that we'll, we should all strive for um, and lowering your energy bills. Now for a key factor for a lot of these people is they want to see a return, to be able to have that control, lowering your bills month on month, quarter by quarter, will obviously ease the financial burden that a lot of families are experiencing at the moment. And generating your own renewable energy, finally gaining independence and control from electricity companies, the grid, and the ongoing issues that we're fa all facing on a on a day-to-day -day basis. Next slide, please. All right, uh, that's me. I just want to say thank you very much, everyone, for for joining me today. Uh, hopefully, you guys got a little bit out of it. Um, that's just the initial process. Um, look forward to potentially hearing more about uh, how we could help everyone.
Thanks very much. Thanks so much, Scott and Anna. And uh, I think Donna has shared the link to Solar Savers in the chat if you'd like to find out more. Uh, so now I'd like to introduce our last speaker for tonight. Bridget Ryan is a resident of Darabin who has installed solar on her apartment and she is going to share her experience. Thanks, Bridget. Thank you. Thanks, Mel. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I probably won't be too long, um, but if you have any questions, you can answer them. Um, uh, I bought my first apartment where I am right now um, about two years ago. And I was really keen to get solar installed um, for many reasons, the main one being um, environmental. But I also was really interested to find out about the savings that were possible. And I guess um, uh, having a, a longer term impact on the um, the price of my apartment if I do choose to move on. So um, all of the aspects I think we've talked about um, in the panel so far were on my radar. But primarily, my motivation was environmental. Um, I looked into a lot of different ways to get solar. Most of the options that I uh, looked at were about getting everyone in the building on solar, and that seemed really challenging to me. I'm in a building of eight apartments. It's just a two-storey 70s um, building. It's not very flash, um, and I'm the only owner-occupier. So for me, convincing the OC to get um, solar for the whole building just didn't really seem possible. I flagged it and there wasn't any uptake. So um, then I started looking into how I could do it by myself. I think the systems, um, the programs that you're talking about tonight might be a little bit different to how I did it. I know it's a new program, but kind of based on um, what I went through. So I um, applied to the Solar Saver program in Darabin which um, combined with uh, the government rebates uh, gave me the regular savings from the rebates, as well as um, Darabin paying upfront for all of the costs for my solar system. And I pay that off over 10 years. So for me, I really wasn't sure if that would work out financially um, as a saving, but because I was really motivated by the environmental um, reasons I decided to go ahead and do it. And what I've found um, since I installed the solar just about a year ago um, is that I have saved um, a significant amount. I'll say that my um, my habits have changed. Kind of interesting that Will said that um, people tend to use more energy once they've got solar. I personally have become fairly obsessive about saving um, energy and using it only um, when the sun is out on really sunny days, especially in winter. Um, I've got a system that's just under five kilowatts on a really sunny day in the middle of summer on a long day. Um, it can generate around 20 kilowatts, which is way more than I use in my um, one bedroom apartment. Um, in winter though, it often doesn't cover my usage if I've got the heater on. So I do try to do a lot of things that um, reduce uh, my usage when the sun is not up, out. Um, it's not cost effective to have a battery. Um, so it's really about real time usage. And as Will mentioned, um, it's really about time of use and using that solar directly. Um, instead of sending it back to the grid because the cost is um, about three times to buy from the grid, um, depending on the time of day. And I am also really obsessive about, um, about making sure I'm on the right plan and I'm getting a really good tariff um, feed in, but primarily, especially in summer, um, it's much more, um, yeah, about my usage. Um, I think all in all, my uh, my average usage, uh, my average cost before I got solar about, um, I think it was installed May last year, though I can't exactly remember, but I think I was on about $1,000 a year for a one-bedroom apartment for um, uh, electricity. Now that is before prices went up. So 
who knows what it would have been um, in this past year. But in the last year, my total cost was just under $400. So for me, that makes a lot of sense um, in terms of what I'm paying off through my rates as well. Um, I still have a small saving annually um, and I hope that that will continue to go down as I learn to use the solar a little bit better as well. Um, I'm not sure that I have much more to say. That might be it actually. Um, happy to take questions though. Thanks very much, Bridget. I think it's really interesting to hear the experience of someone who's actually done it and gone through the process. So thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story. Um, mm -hmm. If you've got any questions for Bridget, pop them into the Q&A and we'll ask them out, ask them to her. Um, and Bridget installed solar through Derriman Solar Saver and with Enviro Group, who's the, in, the solar supplier for Derriman Solar Saver. So we are now going into Q&A and we're joined by um, two representatives of Enviro Group who I th have just joined the panel, but I'm not seeing you in the panel. So we'll just make sure that that's, that process is working. Um, we've got Mick Harris and Sasha Karsten from Enviro Group joining us. And I might just click that button again to make sure that it's working. And um, we also have Anthony Igman. Uh, I can just see you showing up, Sasha. Um, and we've also got Anthony Igman, who is from uh, Specialized Solar and Electrical, who can um, also answer any technical questions about Solar Saver for people who are who might be in Marybeck, Banyul, um, Stonington, or Yarra. Um, so with that. We've got all of our uh, panel members online now. So I'll start to ask some of the questions that have come through in the Q&A and please feel free to keep adding them if you've got more questions coming up. Um, so first we've got a question from Sam. We have an embedded network with Origin. Are we still eligible? Um, and there's been another question come through as well. So the few questions about embedded networks, are you eligible for the Solar Victoria rebate? And um, if anyone else wants to comment on solar for apartments that have an embedded network? I'll, I'll answer that one. Obviously, it's for, for, for our program. Um, unfortunately, no, not at the moment. The embedded work networks aren't eligible. Um, the program is really designed to help apartment residents maximise bill savings from solar PV, and we really want to ensure that that's done equitably. And there have been some concerns over um, how embedded networks work. Um, and we're just work, working at the moment to understand um, whether they're restricting the ability to access feeding tariffs and to actually um, get that full benefit. So um, not in round one, but we are reviewing it. Um, and yeah, if, if we are going to go ahead with it, we'll definitely let people know ahead of round two. Um, but yeah, we, we've got a little bit more work to do on how we ensure residents get the benefits rather than the embedded network provider. Thanks, Guy. Um, is there, is there, does anyone else on the panel want to comment on um, it, solar for apartments with embedded networks more generally? Yeah, if you want, I'm actually dealing with one client uh, who have an embedded network. Um, we've advised them on the process on how to get out of that contract and the steps and process that you need to take. Um, so if that's something that your building has, we can still look at it. Uh, just be aware that it's just going to take a little bit longer uh, to go through that process. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. And happy to add a few comments as well, Mel. Um, <clears throat> uh, a lot of the, I guess, the larger ones, you know, 50 plus, um, there's a lot much larger proportion that are embedded networks, um, which of course goes into, I think, what Guy was saying as well. Um, so what we've seen, I guess, uh, we we get installed on a lot of embedded networks with SolShare, for example, as well, because um, there is a clear different, I guess, value add um, because you can only share solar equitably um, on a physical basis with SolShare. Um, it is quite common. A lot of new builds come with both an embedded network and SolShare. Um, obviously, the embedded network situation limits your ability to choose your retailer to certain degrees. Um, there are, of course, freedom of choice regulations, um, but if anyone knows or has been in an embedded network, um, it's not as simple as it may seem. 
Um, but in saying that, um, some embedded networks do facilitate these things as well and might have their own approaches. So um, it's, uh, and happy to explain, Christy. Um, it's, for those that aren't aware, embedded networks are basically a small private network that's embedded in a particular site. Um, it's usually initiated by a developer when a new build site kicks off. And it means that one uh, entity or specific energy retailer has the ability to sell energy to everyone within that building. Um, and they're exempt from the typical uh, retail regulations uh, for the market. So Victoria is a little bit uh, further along than a lot of other states, but Victoria ensures that they can't charge more than the VDO or the default offer um, or the average cost of energy if you want to put it that way, um, but also means that you do have freedom of choice to change your energy retailer, whereas traditionally, if you are in an embedded network, you are locked and restricted to that retailer um, until the end of that uh, long-term or generally long-term contract uh, that the developer may have signed for them. Um, some OCs might um, opt into becoming embedded networks um, if there is a good opportunity. Um, it does happen occasionally. Um, but that's, I guess, up to the OC to decide what's what's suitable for them. Thanks, Will. Um, the next question is uh, an anonymous question. If the building had solar for common areas installed, but not servicing individual units, is it ineligible? So I think this is relating to if a building already has solar installed for the common areas, would it still be eligible for the solar Victoria rebate? Yes. So uh, that's probably an easier answer. Um, answer. We, we won't provide rebates solely for common areas, um, but if you've got, already got existing solar to your common areas and looking at doing the apartments, yes, we will provide uh, a rebate for that. Great. Thanks, Guy. Um, now, we've got a few questions relating to cost and savings and payback period. So um, I might try to combine a few of these because there's a few similar questions. So we've got an anonymous question. On average, how much will units or flats be saving after installing solar? Um, and someone else asks, on what basis have the percentage of savings been calculated? So I think that's, um, if we could have a, a bit of a comment on uh, the expected savings. And then there's also a question about payback periods um, after receiving the solar for apartments rebate. Is there an average payback period? Uh, I'll answer it and then maybe some of the, the technology providers can answer how they do it. Um, we've calculated the average saving at $500, but we are also um, very well aware that, that there's probably not such a thing as an average apartment or an average apartment block. There are a lot of variations to, to that theme, but it, the, the one that we've got is a, a median of uh, $500. How is it calculated? Um, this might be a, a bit of a sidetrack, but one of the things that we do in, insist on is that um, Solar Victoria authorised retailers are signatories to the NETCC, the New Energy Technology Consumer Code. And under that code, they are required to provide a payback period, uh, which is essentially looking at the installation and, and um, product costs, and then a calculated savings based on the size of the system and things like that. So it is very simplest. It's how much does it cost and how much is it going to pay us back each year, which you then look against your existing um, energy bills and you calculate a payback period. Now that can be calculated in quite a few different ways. Um, but so what you will need to do is talk to your retailer about specifics of how they calculate it. They are required under the NETCC, the New Energy Technology Consumer Code, to um, provide that payback period. So some of them have, a, have some very sophisticated systems um, and some, some really, um, yeah, um, yeah, as I said, sophisticated ways of calculating that. Some of them are, are using a much more simpler, simpler method. But I think that the key thing there is, is to um, look at your individual circumstances and talk to your retailer about how you calculate that. Um, so that would be my answer. And, we, and we've got some um, retailers and providers here who might be able to provide a bit more detail on that. Yeah, I'd love to answer that question too, if that's okay. Uh, first of all, um, I appreciate the question. Uh, but if you don't get the right solution with the right products, you, you, you're never going to get a long-term solution. So therefore, you're never going to get a payback. So you, one, you want to make sure the products will last that length of time. Uh, and if you find that, then you, you've ticked the first box. Uh, secondly, you want to make sure um, that you're working with the system. 
okay, you, you could have 300 kilowatts on the roof. If you don't consume, change your habits and utilize as much of that solar through that daytime period, basically whenever the light's out, you, you can use electricity, then you're never going to get that payback long term. OK, um, so it, it is a bit of a give and take. Um, and the more you can work with the system, the better outcome you're going to achieve. OK, so um, through the process, we can help educate uh, the OC members on how to do that. Uh, best way to set it up, uh, you know, especially if you transition to an all-electric building, some of the key key things are shifts and, and uh, changes in habits. And if you can, you know, if you're willing to follow the advice um, and work with the system, you're going to get a very good outcome. Thanks, Scott, and thanks, Guy. Is there anyone else who wanted to comment on the um, expected savings or payback period questions? Happy, happy to expand a little bit. I don't know if anyone from Enviro wants to chat, but um, it's uh, good to see everyone as well. Um, for a lot of the reference data that we put in, um, we do a lot of feasibility, I guess, studies um, that go into the pre-approval process or stage one of the SolarVic funding. Um, so our feasibility studies that we provide um, is sufficient to get pre-approved for a site. Um, so always welcome to facilitate those, um, even prior to even getting in touch with, um, obviously, a specialised Enviro group, you know, whoever um, ends up being um, an install partner. Um, but the key thing is that we sort of model our data against the, you know, 2,500 apartments that are already connected to SolShare. So we get generalized data um, and average data on, you know, usage, uh, savings, uh, self-consumption and all of that. So it gives us a really good um, sort of estimate, uh, very conservative estimate um, on what we can recommend the savings will be. Um, and also noting that a lot of apartment complexes still have a fair way to go on, a, on the electrification journey. So, I mean, a lot of, you know, gas cooktops, you know, gas hot water, um, all of that jazz. So um, it, it can be a bit of a journey. So I guess the first year annual savings aren't necessarily indicative of that 25, 30 year lifetime of that system, um, which is fairly typical. Um, so there's a few considerations to make there, um, but at the same time, um, you do get all that, that data and information after install as well for your own usage. Um, so you can definitely match against um, what's anticipated as well. Thanks, Will. So I think the to sum up those three answers, um, it, the, the next piece of advice is probably to get in touch with a solar supplier and get, um, get a quote and get that tailored information for your own building. Um, and while we're on the topic of cost, we've got another question um, about the upfront cost. What was, uh, so Sophie asks, what would be the average out-of-pocket fee for installation? Is this expected to be um, covered by residents or does the owner's corporation normally cover it? Um, and noting that we the comments that have already been made about there not really being a typical apartment building, there's probably a lot of variation. Um, if anyone wants to comment on some um, average fees or a range that might be that people might be expected and then how is that cost um, covered by the residents and the owner's corporation? I can give a little bit of an, a, an answer to that and just what we've seen coming through in some of the applications. So as I think I mentioned, it's roughly 60% of the cost is of most of the existing applications coming through is covered by the rebate. So you're left with 40%. Now that 40% does, to translate it into an actual figure, is quite hard without knowing the specifics and the cost of how much is the system going to, to cost. So... But I would say, and this is off the top of my head, it would it looks like it's costing between fifteen hundred and and you know two thousand eight hundred odd per apartment, possibly to um, for the residents. We have had some apartment buildings that look like it's going to cost them uh, ten percent of the total cost. Um, that's rare, but there are a couple there as well. So in some ways, um, as I mentioned before, it's hard to really estimate that. But if, you, if you're thinking about it in terms of an investment, if you're getting, you know, $500 return on a $1,500 investment, I mean, that's you're not going to get that anywhere in the stock market or anything like that. So the, a good way to think about it is in terms of how long is that payback period, how much am I paying and how much am I saving? So, and then having a look at almost the return on investment there. Um, I, I think that's, yeah, yeah. Um, the more we've become involved in this program, the, the, the harder it is to answer specifics. 
And I, just while I'm on that, there's uh, questions there about, um, uh, you know, we've got multiple OCs under a, a big OC. If you've got specifics, um, because it's a bit hard to answer that, we'd need to see a bit more detail. Get in contact with us about that as well. And then we can talk you through in some of those specific circumstances. We've had a couple of those sorts of ones come through. But if your circumstances is way out of the average, um, yeah, come and have a chat with us, I think is probably the easiest way. And we can give you a steer on whether you're going to be eligible or not. Um, I'll, I'll hand over again if, they, if the guys yeah, so I'll, I'll wants to pick up that. Guy, if yeah. that's right. So I uh, appreciate that. That's your experience. Uh, with some of the buildings we've been dealing with, uh, you know, if you're dealing with a building from, say, the, the 1970s or 80s that doesn't have a switchboard at all, um, all of a sudden, you know, to require a full switchboard uh, or custom board, potential relocation uh, running to each individual metre, uh, then all of a sudden those costs will be higher. Uh, but it's also about protecting the building's long-term uh, viability and helping set up to the transition to an all-electric future. Um, so it's not just as simple as, hey, here's a switchboard for solar, here's a switchboard for the next 50 years. Um, you know, and, and there might be additional you know, uh, costs where you need a crane, uh, you know, labour. Um, so each building in my experience has been pretty different because they, they are all unique. They all do provide their own challenges. And um, basically, we, each quote we send has been tailored specifically for that building. Uh, and have their own challenges. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll tailor that solution to see what's best long-term solution for that building uh, and then present that to uh, the OC. So I'll jump in there for a second, just given my experience from quoting on these at the moment, I have seen a price range for an individual apartment coming in at around 1,500 to 6,000, the higher end, is often involving a lot of switchboard work or some extra things, as just mentioned before, a lot of the older apartments don't have a main, a main switchboard there, or we've actually seen quite a bit of degradation. So it's requiring some repair work to get it up to standard as well. Um, on the lower end, it's generally very straightforward, easy install, which is lovely. Uh, unfortunately, it seems to be a bit of a rarity. It's going to be quite interesting. And I think, you know, what we've seen, um, you know, personally, we get a lot of meter board photos come through with a lot of people that approach us directly and um, can definitely vary, I guess, what's needed. Um, but it is important to note that it's not necessarily, I guess, the solar piece that is required or the, you know, the driver of that meter board upgrade. It is, of course, any of that, um, you know, modernization of your building to current standards. Um, so it can be quite interesting. Um, and a lot of the time the meter board costs may sit separate to a lot of these quotes as well, um, cause it is a general, you know, general upgrade for everyone in the building. Um, even in those situations where not everyone takes part, although generally not 99% of the time, everyone does take part. Um, I think the other thing to note, and I, I didn't cover it in my own presentation, um, just around, I guess, how people fund these types of assets as well. Um, we, uh, there's definitely a multi-pronged approach to it. Um, of course, we sort of tip at the very top is any sort of rebates that are available. So of course the Solidic rebate kicks that off. Um, involved in that beforehand is even STCs, which is that federal rebate that's been around for years and reduces by a little bit each calendar year. Um, but that's already applied into all of those pricings, of course. Um, so after the rebate level, you do have your sinking fund so that the AOC can contribute um, a proportion um, of what they feel is suitable. Um, obviously, it's always good to leave a bit in the kitty for a rainy day when it comes to these OCs, um, but it does mean that it can take a chunk of that. Um, from there, then there might be a small special levy that's implemented um, across the owners corporation as well. So a lot of the time we'll see, um, you know, let's say it's $2,000 out of pocket per apartment. Um, you may have, say, $1,000 per apartment uh, covered uh, via the sinking fund. Um, which leaves another $1,000 um, to fund. Um, so they might have a $500 special levy, for example, um, for each apartment, which is a manageable, you know, one year savings, um, which, you know, makes it really appetizing. Um, and then the rest, if facilitated or if needed, might be via Estrada or an owner's corporation loan, for example. Um, there's quite a few financiers out there. Um, definitely um, do due diligence um, on each of those loan options. Um, 
but it makes it manageable and digestible for everyone in that OC um, because there's nothing worse than getting um, hit with a big cost. So it's we find it's just that education piece, that opportunity for everyone to chat about these things because um, especially with the cost of living, people get a little bit funny when it comes to money, uh, which is more than fair, um, but it's about having that cons consultation with your building. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of good, you know, relationships being built out of that within these buildings, which has been a nice thing to sort of see come through, which has been uh, beautiful. Uh, back to you, though, Mel. Thanks, Will. And thanks, everyone, for contributing answers to that question. Um, there was a question in the Q&A about whether the recording of the webinar will be available in case you wanted to share it with your owners corporation or others. Um, so yes, it will be available on the council websites from, for the hosting councils and we'll email you a link to that when that's ready. Um, there's an, the next question is an anonymous question. Can you please share information on home energy rating requirements as Will mentioned coming in for apartments? Yeah, absolutely. So um, still quite early days um, as of yet, but in the last federal budget, um, there was um, money announced into implementing a program um, where you basically have to disclose energy costs associated with buildings, um, apartments being specifically included that in that as well or in the general term. Um, so that's something that will come in, um, <laughs> we hope, this year, this calendar year. Um, it could be a little bit longer than that, but it sort of will definitely increase that value that having solar connected to your apartment does provide and having solar that's behind your own meter where you have that ownership of that that solar being delivered to you um so i guess for any of those early adopters and um i think i guess the funding that's available at the moment through solar vic and the federal government um is a very high proportion um i'm not sure whether it will remain that high i don't know um hopefully it does but um obviously can't we probably everyone can't speak on these things but um definitely encourage sort of, you know, taking that opportunity, but we'll see how that goes and what, how that looks like. Um, I think there's a lot of program development that's coming through for that. Uh, but as we know more, um, we'll definitely um, let people know. Thanks, Will. Um, there's a question from uh, Gabstar. What is your experience of electric car chargers? Are apartments getting one or two charge points or one per electric car? And how does that work with the dividing of power? Would anyone like to comment on that? Uh, happy to cover the, I guess, the soul share, how my interact with soul share, and then I'll leave it to the, the rest of the panelists, of course. Um, I guess traditionally there's two approaches when it comes to EVs. Um, of quite a few sites that we've seen, um, whether it's planned or is current, they may have a PowerPoint within their own, um, I guess, car, car spot within their apartment. That is very dependent, though, on the electrical layout of that building. Um, so it isn't always possible or feasibly uh, feasible from a cost perspective to do that. Um, now, those approaches are great where you have that connected behind your own meter. So you any sort of energy that you're consuming with your EV um, is just a load, very similar to within your apartment, um, but it's behind your meter. Um, so it's really good to be able to use your, I guess, shared solar allocation in that, in that way. Um, traditionally, though, um, where SolShare is not involved, most um, installs for EV charging will go via an EV distribution board and um, come off the common area connection. So your common line power connection, um, that allows, I guess, larger and faster charges to be utilised um, within those complexes because um, it allows for demand management with that. Um, and generally, there'll be some sort of billing system um, implemented that allows people to be charged generally per month. Um, or when they use that energy um, as to the amount of energy they've consumed and charged their EV with. Um, and whether that's to each and every car park or as car parks opt in or in the visitor car parks, there's a lot of options. Um, but there's a lot of, I guess, consultants and, you know, um, specialists here today that can definitely assist with those things and what's right for your building. Yeah, I agree with everything that Will said. Um, and also well, buildings that we've been dealing with, uh, is, they've just been so so different options you know it's, some have a just a simple gpo connected to each parking spot some have their own individual uh, smart charges to each parking lot some have designated um ev charges in the public area and they share it um, and there's different ev charging and have different codes for different setups and charge individual uh owners so there's a variety of setups and just it's pretty much whatever what's suited best for your site 
uh, and how many people have EBs. And there's a range of factors that will then determine that. And then we have to potentially look at load management systems, complete a feasibility study for the building uh, to be able to see one, what the load is, what it can handle uh, and what infrastructure is required. Um, so yeah, it, it's, a, it's a process that needs to be taken if you want to look down that, that path. Thanks, Kite, and thanks, Will. Um, there's an anonymous question. Is there any council support to help owners negotiate with their owners' corporations to get approval for solar installation on common roof space? And noting that, that there are a number of barriers to overcome. Um, I, I'd just like to mention the a project that uh, City of Yarra and Marybeck did last year to develop a series of guides called Unlocking Sustainable Strata. So if you visit the links that Donna has shared in the chat to either go to um, the Yarra Council website or the Marybeck Council website, you can download the Unlocking Sustainable Strata guides, which um, do aim to provide some guidance into how to negotiate those um, decision-making processes with owners corporation and other guidance around um, installing solar and making apartments more sustainable. And the Yarra Energy Foundation has also published a guide to solar for apartments, which um, Guy shared in his presentation earlier. So you can also find that on um, the City of Yarra's website and the Solar Victoria website, as well as the Yarra Energy Foundation's website. Um, and I think if you if there's further support that you are seeking in a specific way, um, please reach out to your council because um, that that's something that we need to hear from residents, what type of specific support they are seeking and what barriers they're facing. Um, and that helps to inform what programs and support and resources we can provide um, in the future. To add on that, Mel, if, if possible, I, I thought it might be useful just to speak through a bit of the um, decision-making within the stratos as well. Um, quite often there is a consensus that you do need, I guess, a hundred percent of the uh, people within the building to sort of opt in. Um, I guess strat oh, owners corps are a beautiful thing um, because I guess anything when it comes to say solar on the rooftop, um, forms in Victoria, forms a special resolution or the requirement for one. So the decision-making process behind that is generally um, either done via an AGM or an SGM, so a special meeting, um, or an action via a voting ballot. Now, with that, uh, a special resolution can be passed through as per any other standard special re resolution. For those that are aware of them, um, it's you know very standard there. Um, but for those that aren't, um, where there is a 75% consensus or voting um, that says yes, it means that that decision can be passed straight through. Um, where there is a interim special resolution, um, that is where 50 to 75% of lot entitled or lots or entitlements say yes, and no more than 25% say no. In that period, it's open for approximately 28 days um, for those objections to come through. Um, but then if not enough objections come through, but there's at least 50% that say yes, it's passed through as a full special resolution. So that means that that can be implemented for all within the building. Um, you know, people can still opt out, of course, um, but it does mean that, you know, similar to getting your, I guess, apartment building repainted or any maintenance works, um, these things can be implemented for that building um, and that decision made. So um, it doesn't mean that everyone has to say yes, of course, in that building for it to happen. Um, obviously, um, that's the idea, but it means that, you know, it's almost like a, you know, a small democracy at the end of the day um, as to the decision making um, for taking those up. Um, the, oh, the other thing I was going to say is um, on pre-approval as well, and whether Guy wants to mention or speak on this a little bit, but um, template voting ballots are also um, uh, supplied with the pre-approval as well, as well as a lot of the other documentation that's required. So all those hard yards or um, things that would have otherwise come through your OC manager um, are already provided. So it's a very low touch thing for your OC manager. Um, that's been a really big thing communicated to me that um, people aren't too sure whether their OC manager will help them out. Um, but um, it's quite surprising, you know, we've spoken a lot and, you know, Scott, Sasha, um, Mick, Anthony, we've all spoken to so many strata managers or OC managers in Victoria. Um, and, you know, a lot of them are now up to speed, but they are also learning. So they do appreciate the opportunity to, to sort of uh, be educated on these things. And we're all here as a resource to help support um, to build the industry, which is, of course, that purpose of um, Solar Victoria's funding as well. 
Yeah, thanks, Will. Yeah, we do have resources on our website which you can help you use, in, in, and um, we've templated some of those documents, as, as Will said. We also have links to various other um, supporting organisations, Consumer Affairs Victoria, and others that you can get in contact with about some of the how do you run a, a special resolution meeting and those, those sorts of things. They're on our website, those links as well. So have a look there. Thanks. And just in terms of that question about a sweet spot, um, is 20 out of 30 apartments going to give you a better return than five out of 30? Um, from in terms of the grant, yes. Um, the more you can get, the better. But we do, we will, we've got applications, you know, where there's 15, 15 out of 20 coming through. And but obviously it changes your um, it changes your payback period in the financials if you have less. Um, so the more the better would be the simple answer to that. There's not really a sweet spot, I don't think, um, but just in general, the more the better. Yeah. Great, thanks, Guy. And a related question to that, what is the likelihood of rebates being available for larger complexes in the future around 100 apartments? Yes. Not sure if you can um, comment on that at this stage. but uh, I'll comment on it. I think, um, as I said, one of the things we want to ensure is that there's there is enough solar energy actually to benefit the residents in a, in a reasonable payback period. And from what we've seen so far, the, the, the percentage of common roof area across greater than 50 lots in general is, is not going to give you that, that benefit. So we are reviewing that because, um, yeah, like 100 lots may be spread out across, you know, it might be two-storey across a lot. So we, we're having a look at what may be possible in that and we will um we may make some adjustments into round two it, off the top of my head i don't think 100 lots would, would would make it there but we're happy happy to have a look and if people have got specific examples um please send them through and we'll have a look and and that might help inform our research as well um as a few people have mentioned we're learning a lot as we go through this and we we definitely want to hear from people definitely appreciate the feedback and we we are committed to you know making this work as as best as it can. So any feedback like that, any questions or specifics you can give us, that that would be great. Um, so just send them through to to the apartments at Solar Victoria website uh, email box, I should say. And that, the links are on on our website as well. Yeah. Great, thanks, Guy. Um, so we probably have time for one more question, and this um, this is a question about the difference between directly connected systems. So I think that's the solar systems for individual apartments, and uh, as opposed to solar sharing systems. Um, and the question is a, asking about the pros and cons of these and cost considerations. So there's probably a lot in there, but perhaps there could be a, um, a just a bit of an overview about the different options. Um, so I think what what Bridget has done in her apartment is to install solar on an individual apartment. So it means that she didn't need to get everyone on board and um, she could just do that herself. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, um, Alum Energy provides the solar share to en enable that solar sharing between different apartments. And I think Mick, would you like to have a go at that question? Here we are, I'm unmuted, that's good. <clears throat> So if you've got a small block of apartments, you might have two or three, you've got your own roof area, then potentially it's it's not a difficult thing to put solar on your roof, have that running back to the meter, and uh, it's just like a normal domestic situation. Bigger apartment block, you've got 20 uh, apartments, something like that. The problems are you've got to get the body corp to agree to let you do it if you want to have your own solar system. It is technically possible. You can run it back to the meter, but electrically it doesn't make that much sense either because let's say you're not home during the day, you're producing power, you know, it's going into your switchboard, goes out through the meter, you're getting five cents a kilowatt hour or something like that. So you're not getting much of a financial return. If you use the solar share kind of system, the alum system, that power that you're producing... <clears throat> could go back to other people. And so other people get advantage of that. Well, really, it's not your individual power. It's one system on the roof going to one inverter or a series of inverters, going into the main switchboard, feeding everyone's places. So you can do it individually, but you've got to get permission and financially it doesn't work as well. So um, um, I'd only really suggest you do it if you've got a very small set of group of apartments. 
Thanks, Meg. Does anyone else want to jump in on that question before we wrap up? I can speak to yeah. my um, experience in my building just briefly. Um, you're right, um, Mick, it's, um, we, we've got eight apartments in my building. The reason I did it on my own and was able to was because we discussed um, splitting the roof space equally between the lots. Um, so I've left roof space for everyone to potentially have the same amount of solar as me, which I imagine would not work as well in a larger block. Um, also, because we're a small block, I didn't need approval from so many people. Um, we had to have a special resolution um, to get it passed. Um, and I had one no um, and everyone else didn't care, uh, which was lucky for me. And I know that's like, I think I had a bit of a, um, a special um, journey in that I had very few roadblocks. Um, I would have loved to get my whole block um, on board with solar, but they just weren't interested. Um, but for me, it's it's been worth it. Um, I don't think it would have happened in many um, in many blocks. So I have a lot of really nice um, uh, people in the um, owners in the block, um, which I know isn't the case for everyone. Thanks, Bridget, and it's really great to hear your story and to hear that that is an option for people who are in specific situations where you've got a small block and perhaps other people are not as interested in coming on board. Yeah. Um, so with that, we'll need to wrap up because it's now eight o'clock, but I'll just like to quickly share my screen to share some links to further information. Can you see that screen? Fantastic. Um, so I just want to say a huge thank you to all of our speakers and panelists tonight. Um, I think we've got a lot of information about solar for apartments that's been shared this evening. And um, we have managed to get through a lot of the questions, but on, I know that there's a few people who haven't um, had their questions answered. So if you if we haven't had time to get to your question, please feel free to reach out to um, the relevant people. You can reach out to, as um, Guy mentioned, there's an apartment's uh, email address at Solar Victoria. Um, you can reach out to Solar Savers, um, Darabin Solar Saver, and any of the five councils. Um, so. Uh, there's some links to further information on the screen now. So please visit the pages for each of the, the councils. The, uh, if you live in one of these councils, um, the Solar Victoria Solar for Apartments page, um, Illum Energy, Solar Savers, Darabin Solar Saver, and um, the High Life Expo. Uh, so thanks again for coming tonight. You will have an email um, coming to your inbox with a sh with these links, but also a short survey. So we'd love to have your feedback on this event. And uh, we hope to see you again soon at the High Life Expo or another event soon. <laughs>